One of the most important operations you can learn about in mathematics and physics is performing rotations in three-dimensional space. So for example, in the animation we're watching here, this white vector is getting rotated several different times. And we want to be able to mathematically tell the computer how to carry out that rotation. So what I've done here in vPython is make a real simple set of functions that you can copy and paste into your own code that will rotate a vector for you. Uh, the first thing we'll do is make some axes for reference just so we can see what axes we're rotating about. I've talked about uh, how we make those axes in an earlier video that I'll include in the uh, description below. Now the first thing we're going to do is make a vector. Uh, we're going to represent this vector using the arrow function. The most important thing we're worried about here is the vector's axis. Axis is the direction that it points. So it's going to point, originally it's going to point to the right and up. Then we're going to define the vector rotations. These vector rotations are carried out in a matrix. Uh, matrix multiplication is not nearly as scary as it looks. It's basically a combination of multiplying two sets of numbers together piece by piece and then adding those products together. If you can take a dot product, if you know how to take AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ and add them together, uh, you can do matrix multiplication. It's just a matter of keeping track of what you're multiplying together or better yet, it's really a matter of telling the computer how to carry out the multiplications for you. So when we talk about these rotation matrices, we really have to talk about three different ones. We have to talk about a rotation about the x-axis, a rotation about the y-axis, and a rotation about the z-axis. We have to split it up that way because we live in a three-dimensional universe. And the interesting thing is when you rotate a vector about an axis, the vector's component along that axis does not change. It's the other two axes that change. So for example, when we take a rotation about the x-axis, the x component does not change, right? We have to calculate a new y component and a new z, new z component, but v's x component does not change. It's really interesting, right? It's, it's kind of one of those counterintuitive things in math where you are specifying one thing, but you're actually specifying the thing that doesn't change and you're changing the other two things. And the way you do this change is just with a combination of sine and cosine uh, of the angle that you want to rotate by. Uh, the way to remember this, or the way to be able to reconstruct this in your mind is to think about how cosine and sine behave at very small angles. Um, so for example, if I take this angle, if I make it a very small angle, if I make it one degree, then I don't expect the vector components to change very much, right? If I rotate a vector by one degree, it really does not change that much. Its vector components are very similar to what they were originally. So what that means is I need for the angle to go into the cosine when it's multiplying the same component, and I need it to go into the sine when it's multiplying the other component. Let me show you what this means. For example, when I'm calculating the new y component, then I want the cosine of the angle to multiply vy, because for a small angle, for one degree, cosine of that small angle is very close to one, meaning new y is gonna be very close to old y, right? Because it's cosine of a small angle, Cosine small angle, very close to one, meaning new y, basically almost approximately the same thing as, as the original y component. That means the other one needs to get the sine. In this case, the z component needs to get the sine because that's the one that should be a very small change. It should only go into the z axis very slightly. Then for new z, we flip them around. It's the z component that gets the cosine and the y component that gets the sine, right? Because for a small angle, cosine of the angle has to be close to one. So the new Z has to be close to the original Z and it has to have very little influence from the Y component, right? Sine of a small angle, very small number. So it shouldn't have a whole lot of change from Y there. The only other piece that you have to either remember or figure out or honestly look up 
every time you do it, is which one gets a negative sign. There's always going to be one negative sign floating around in the rotation. The negative is, is necessary to keep the magnitude of the vector the same because remember a rotation just changes the direction of a vector. It doesn't change the magnitude of the vector. And if you don't include this minus sign, or if you put it in the wrong spot, or if you put in too many minus signs, the magnitude of the vector will not change. You'll basically get almost a random seeming new vector. Um, uh, for example, in this rotation, it turns out it needs to go on the Z component in the calculation of the new Y component, and then everybody else is positive. Um, that negative sign is probably built somewhere into the levi chavita tensor about taking your indices in cyclic versus non-cyclic order, uh, but I'm probably overloading uh, your, your processor on talking about matrices to begin with, so we'll, we'll talk about levi chavita another day. So anyway, then this function just returns a new vector that's got the same X component, the new Y component, and the new Z component. By the way, it's necessary to create temporary placeholders for new Y and new Z because you need the old values, the old Y and old Z in both these calculations, right? You can't overwrite it in this calculation or this one gets messed up. So that's just a little uh, computational caveat. Then you do the same thing for rotating about the y-axis. You leave the y component the same and you create a new x and a new z. Again, the cosine gets attached to the same component and the sine gets attached to the opposites. And again, one of them is going to be negative just depending on the cyclic permutation order of the x, y, and z in the equation. Uh, and then we'll return new x old y and new z. Then again, same thing for the z component. Uh, you calculate a new x and a new y. It's the matches that get the cosine and the non-matches that get the sine. And there's a minus sign here when you're calculating new x based on y. So let's see how these work out. Let's suppose I want to do three rotations in this animation. First, we're going to rotate about the z-axis. We're going to rotate about the x-axis. We're going to rotate about the y-axis. By the way, notice the thing we are passing to this rotation is the vector itself, the mathematical vector, not the shape, because you might do this with any sort of vector in vPython. So we're basically taking A's axis and we're updating it based on rotating its axis, and we're going to rotate it by pi by 4, so that's 45 degrees. So we'll start out with the original, rotate it by, rotate it about the z-axis, rotate it by the x-axis, and rotate it about the y-axis. So let's remember our order here is z, x, y. So I look at this animation, rotation about the z-axis, the x-axis, and then the y-axis. So you notice, uh, you know what, let's increase the sleep value there just so we can see what's going on here. Let's make it sleep for three seconds each time. It goes by much slower when you're debugging things. So a rotation about the z-axis first, good. A rotation about the x-axis next, and then a rotation about the y-axis. You can see it's kind of pivoting about each of those axes each time it takes one of these steps. You can also notice that, for example, the z component's consistent there, the x component's consistent there, and the y component's going to be consistent in this case. Remember, whenever it rotates about an axis, it is going to keep that component consistent. So 0z component, still 0z component. 0x component, still 0x component. Y component just above 1, still a Y component just above 1. Now, here is why it's really important that we understand how these rotations are formulated as matrices, because rotation operations do not commute. Meaning, if you do rotation A, rotation B, rotation C, in general, it does not give you the same effect as rotation B, rotation A, rotation C. Let's take a look at this in action. Remember we did Z, X, and Y at first. Now let's try out Y, X, and Z. All right, let's try this one out. Control 2 to run. So we now do this rotation, this rotation, this rotation, brings me to a very different location than I was at in that first order, right? So in the y, x, z, uh, I end up in a very different orientation than I had for z, x, y. In fact, let's do this. Let's make it so that these things are rotating uh, together in tandem. So we're going to take out the comments there. And I'm going to make a new vector 
Uh, let's see. Let's make a new vector. B equals, what did I give for this one? Uh, let's, let's give them the same starting vector. And yeah, let's just make it the same thing. And now we're going to change A's into B's down here. So we are, we are creating A and B the same at the beginning. And we are going to rotate them in different orders. Uh, let's actually move this up here just so we see it. You know what? Let's give B a different color. Let's make B color equals color dot yellow. Okay, so first we'll rotate A, then we'll rotate B. Again, we're going from ZXY to YXZ. So here's our white vector rotation. It ends up in this octant, whereas our yellow ends up not, it's, they're both pointing up, right? But they're very different directions, right? This one's got a negative X and much less of a Z component because we applied this, these rotations in different orders, right? I mean, you could, you could do this with, uh, with other orders as well. Uh, let's suppose I make a vector C and let's make C cyan. And then we'll give the same thing here. And we're gonna change all of the B's into C's. All right, what order do I have? I have Z, X, Y, and Y, X, Z. I don't have just X, Y, Z. Let's just go in alphabetical order there. By the way, you notice between yellow and cyan, I'm only flipping two of them. I'm leaving Z at the end. Right, I'm leaving two of them, this, I'm, I'm just flipping two of them, I'm leaving one of them the same. All right, there's our white set of rotations and we'll do our yellow set of rotations. Now we'll do our cyan set of rotations, ends up up here, All right? So uh, I hope this tool is useful to you as you rotate vectors around. I especially hope it's useful to you illustrating how these rotation matrices do not commute, that, that the order is something you have to pay attention to when you're working with them. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.